It's good to be back. It's, this is the first time since 2020 so you've been in the house. Back. It's great it's to so have you, Tony good. Dwyer to of outside. Canaccord Genuity, of what course. What a lead in its play. We haven't missed a beat. That's awesome. Um, so what do you think? Do you think the Fed is going to be more hawkish in the tone in the press conference? It's, it's been interesting, Mel, as I was listening to you guys and what the market's saying. If you look at yesterday, the, the bond market rates have gone up significantly, mm -hmm. but the inflation break-evens have been coming down and they peaked in March. So that would tell me that the market's actually thinking the more hawkish the Fed is, the more likely it's going to be that they'll, they'll be able to control inflation. But on the neutral rate, I, I think it's really important when we look at history. We are such a levered economy. We added almost $10 trillion of debt to the economy. Every cycle the Fed wants to, remember Jerome Powell in 2018, we're nowhere near neutral, and the next move was a cut. Mm -hmm. And it's the impact that works with a delay. It, the impact of higher rates on an extremely yeah. levered economy. Just look at, just look at um, according to Ivy Zellman and Associates, I call her the queen, she's awesome. Not more than 90% of mortgages are currently below the um, current mortgage rate, which means right. if you're gonna try and get equity out of your house, you're going to have to pay probably 200 basis points or, or you know, maybe a little less more to do that. And you're not going to do that. So if the Fed's not printing money, if fiscal's not giving it to you, if China's in a rapid slowdown, if Europe's on the embarking on a recession because of the war, this, uh, this is about do you have money availability, which we've talked about literally every time I'm on the show. That's dwindling fast. I would argue that the neutral rate is below where anybody thinks it is because it is every cycle. That's why we go into a recession. It shuts down before they can realize it. So does that mean that, are you saying that we are going to go into a recession at some point? So our, our playbook for this year is mm -hmm. we, we're, I'm, I'm in guy's camp. We're going to get an oversold bounce. You okay. know, sentiment and my tactical indicators are about as bad as they get. And it's an oversold bounce. So what's done the worst could bounce. But then it's going to, how we, go into the end of the year is going to depend on what the Fed does. The only bull case that I think you can come up with at this point is if the Fed it, in the third quarter sees the economy really coming down. Like, I'll bet the ISM's below 50. You're going to start to see the unemployment rate tick up because there's a great indicator on export orders. That is That leads unemployment. So all of us, and that's been getting, you know, uh, obviously slower. So the point is, if you get really slow economic data in a levered economy at the end of the third quarter, maybe they bring the market expectations down as they go up. Right now, the Fed's in a box. They have been since the end of the year. Yeah. Their two main indicators are lagging indicators, unemployment and inflation. Everything else is starting to, peak, you know, roll over and peak like the ISM. They're in a box. They have to do it, but they could talk later in the year talk rates down. So when you're talking about the levered economy, you're talking about the consumer, businesses. What what leverage are you talking about? Or the government? Or just overall oh. debt. If you look at overall debt, it's about eighty-three trillion dollars. I looked it up on Bloomberg before I came on. Um, as a percentage of GDP, it's not as high as it was in the Great Financial Crisis, but it's still extraordinarily levered in the amount of debt. So if you're if you want to try. Remember, what's very interesting about debt is what does it do? It creates higher asset prices because you spend it. You go out and buy stuff. When you have a zero interest rate policy, you're going to go out and buy stuff. I did. Can I afford that stuff? Nice tie, base? by the way. Well, thank you. <laughs> Why, thank you, sir. <laughs> you know, can you afford that asset at a 50% increase in price and 200 race basis points more? This isn't a game. It's about do you, what kind of monthly payment do you have? And affordability of everything, especially with inflation, has come down. So it's, it's, been, a, it's, it's been kind of weird. I haven't been like the, the biggest bull on Wall Street for like a year and change. You know, you call for a trade here and there, but you really got to have that money availability improving. And the only thing that changes that narrative now, Mel, is if the Fed talks down the market rates. Tony, always good to see you. Great to see you in person. Oh, it's so Welcome good to back. see you. Thanks. Tony Dwyer of Canaccord Genuity. You agree with Tony, Steve? I do agree with Tony, and that's the most pessimistic I've heard Tony sound in quite some time. And as his point was, he's usually the biggest bull on the street, and I don't see it coming from him now. He's very cautious. So usually when everyone is too cautious, then it means we're going to rip to higher levels. I still think we're going to see 3,800 in the S&P because everyone's focused in on 4,000 in the S&P. That will overshoot to the downside.